Today I'm building a workplace risk application to help team members throughout a workplace easily identify physical safety or other health risks, um, collaborate with their team members to help confirm or add additional details, and then give everyone the tools to help provide resolutions as quickly as possible. So this could likely be relevant in like large retail stores and manufacturing facilities, distribution warehouses, et cetera. The primary goal is to make sure employees have a safe environment and they feel like any concerns they're raising are gonna be quickly resolved. So I have, I have an idea of the functionality I'd like to include in this app. So what I'm gonna do first is create a very basic data structure that will support those features. And you know, since AppSheet is very data-driven, in order to build functionality like capturing photos, for example, I'm gonna to need to make sure I have a column for images. So let's get started building the data structure. What I'm doing right here is I'm setting up four different tables, one for risks, one for resolutions that will be associated with those risks, comments, which can be made on the risks, and then a, a table of team members. And these will be the, the people that will be submitting the risks and also uh, providing the resolutions. I'm setting the column headers right now, and I'm trying to be as consistent as possible across my different tables. And this is going to help me build relationships between these tables once I've connected them to AppSheet. I'm also going to fill in a little bit of sample data just to get started. And this is going to provide some initial content in my app prototype that will just help me define the interface a little bit more easily. The data structure I'm setting up does not have to be perfect. It just needs to capture the broad strokes of the functionality I'd like to build in this application. And I will expect to come back to this, to each of these tables and modify them as the scope of the application changes. So now I've switched over to AppSheet and I'm connecting to this Google Sheet that I've started What's happening behind the scenes right now is that AppSheet's reading that first table and it is creating an initial prototype with an initial view just based off that one table. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect the other three tables. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead, it's okay if there's read write access to all of them. And I'm gonna go through and make sure that the column types for each of those columns have been correctly identified. AppSheet automatically detects the column types for the columns and all the tables that you've connected, but it's important to run through them, make sure that they are identified correctly. And then one of the first things I'm going to do here is build relationships between those tables by setting some column types as ref. In this example, when I'm logging a new risk, I want the documented by field to draw from the team table. I'm scanning through the other columns and one of the first things I do is I'll, I'll hide any that I know I don't want to show up anywhere in the application. And so I'll disable the show toggle. What I also noticed is that I was missing a column. So I went back into the column structure of the resolution, added resolution detail, resolution description, and then I hit regenerate structure. And that brought that new column into my app definition. I'm continuing on and I'm, I'm really focusing on building relationships. Right now, I'm setting the resolved by field to draw from the team table. Setting the initial value as user email automatically populates the user's email in that field. Updating the date and time to make sure that the initial value is now, which will include the date and time as opposed to just the date. Commenter is going to reference the team table, always draw, and then the initial value is going to be user email. So that'll look at the person logged in right now and pre-fill it with who that existing user is using the app. The headshot column in the team table wasn't identified as an image, so I just corrected that real quickly. Since relationships have been set between these tables, AppSheet automatically now shows lists of related items as virtual columns in the tables. 
I'm going to tweak the names of these just so they show up a little bit more cleanly in the interface. Okay, my data structure is fairly clean right now. I'll, I'll come back and have to make some more modifications, but let's move over to the UX tab where AppSheet has automatically uh, created some system generated views that I can start customizing. Now, a lot of these are, I'm probably just gonna remove right away because I want this application to be very, very simple and just uh, switch between two different views. So I'm gonna remove some of these to get started. I'm going back into my table and I'm making a little bit more sample data. And this is gonna help me now that I'm moving into the UX portion of my app, having some sample data to draw from here will just give me a better picture of how the interface is coming together. And so I've added a few more risks and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, manually create a resolution and I'm associating it to one of those risks. You can see I put the risk ID in the risk column here. Now there's a relationship established between these tables and so you'll see that appear in the app. I'm also manually adding a comment in my table with that same risk. You can see that same risk ID is being added here. It's not necessary when you're building an application to have a, a dedicated table of app users, but in this case, I have uh, some details, namely headshots that I want to show up in the app. When you're building an application, there's a preview as function that also makes it very easy to preview your application as you're building it as a different user. And we'll, uh, we'll try that in a second. I'm dropping in some uh, random headshots, and these are URLs. This column type has been set as an image. An image can be a file that is uploaded through the application, which then is automatically saved to a folder in your connected data source. In this case, images can also be um, cloud-hosted URLs. The first thing I'm doing right now is defining the view of risks. In this case, I'm, uh, use, I'm creating a card view and I'm removing some of the fields. I wanna make this a very simple view. And I wanna include the image, the title of the risk, and then I'm also uh, going to create a virtual column that is going to concatenate a few different fields just for a better description field. So right now, um, I'm creating a virtual column that in the description will show details. And this will just be kind of a, yeah, documented by user at uh, this date and time. So it just pulls it together in a little bit uh, more of a clean field. That virtual column is not going to actually exist in my data table. It exists only in the app definition. So now I'm testing out the form. That plus sign is an automatic, that's a system generated action on this view. Using relevant and easily recognizable icons is actually very helpful for the end app user as they're navigating your app. I'm going through and I'm uploading a couple, um, just testing out the form now. What this is doing is it's adding rows to the risk table. Now what I'd like this application to do is separate out uh, unresolved risks and resolved risks. I'm gonna do that by creating some slices. And the, the, what a slice is, is it's filtering the table. And the, the criteria that I want, that I'm creating here are, does the risk have any associated resolutions? So if, if the risks, if the associated resolutions is greater than zero, then that's gonna be one table, one filtered slice. And if it has zero, then that'll be another filter slice. So the risks view in my app will be anything that's been logged that has no resolution yet. And then after this, I'm gonna create a view that is associated with that other slice. And so I'll have two different views then. Risks that need to be addressed and risks that have had a resolution. 
While I'm cleaning up this card view, I realize that I'm pulling in the email in this virtual column. And so I'm gonna use a dereference to actually pull in the first name of the user as opposed to just their email. That'll make the description read a little easier. So I'm copying that initial view. And now I'm picking that resolved risk slice that is showing me a view of any risks that have an associated resolution. Now in my data, right, I manually created a resolution for one of those risks. And so I have a little bit of sample data that will that should appear in that slice. I'm gonna clean up the card view of this particular view. You can see the face mask, face mask supply running low. That is the row in my data that does have a, a resolution associated with it. So that's showing up in this sliced view. And I'm just gonna clean up the card view a little bit to remove some of the actions that I, um, I think are just gonna be unnecessary for what I want my app to do. I'm gonna change the icon to be a little bit more obviously associated with uh, resolve resolution. So I've got a little check mark with a shield. Now to make it even more clear what is unresolved and what is resolved, I'm adding a format rule here. And I'm actually using the same expression that I used in my slices. I'm just saying, does this risk that's been logged, does it have any associated resolutions? If not, then make the text red. Counting the number of related items and determining if it's greater than or equal to zero just ha is just one expression of a variety you could use to accomplish the same thing in this case. So now I'm gonna go in, I'm just gonna copy that format rule and I'm gonna apply a very similar, just gonna, I'm gonna just say if there are more than zero resolutions, then make that title green. Now when I save and I go test it out, you can see that my resolved issues are green and I have related resolutions and related comments and then those risks are gonna be red. I'm looking at down here are ref views. These are system generated views. And I'm, I'm specifically diving into a detail view. So this is looking at a row level. I wanna customize the view that's uh, created when I'm looking at each individual row. I'm removing some of the rows because I want to distill this down to just what's necessary to see. There's some data in my table that doesn't need to be included in the app. I'm also looking at the inline view. So there's a list of related records for each risk. There's a list of related comments and related resolutions. And I'm changing that inline view to be card view. And this will just be a, a little bit of a cleaner way to view the comments and also the resolutions that other team members are uh, adding to that record. I've decided that in the resolutions table, I actually don't need to log an image for every resolution. I think just uh, providing a text field is fine. So I went back in my table and I deleted that column and then I needed to go into my resolutions table and regenerate it to make sure that my app definition recognized that a column had been removed. So now I'm in the inline view again. I'm customizing the inline table here. And this is just, uh, I'm adding a few details showing who, uh, the name of the person and the date and time that a resolution was created. And you can see now how that's showing up associated with the risk detail view. I'm making sure that those resolutions and comments are added uh, specifically uh, to the column order. And then I'm gonna provide the same sort of customization on those inline comments as I did for the inline resolutions. Card views are really good for images, but also if you just have blocks of text, you can remove the image entirely from a card view and it gives you kind of a nice uh, just text card view.
I'm doing it now is for the comments, I'm creating a, a dereference. So the comments have a user associated with it. And in, in the team table, I have a headshot available. And you can see now the headshot is showing up, even though the headshot is not actually technically in the comments table. So what I'm doing is I'm dereferencing. I know who the user is. And I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, look in that user table and find the headshot column associated with that user. And I'm pulling that in as a virtual column image in the comments table. And then uh, I think I'm doing the same in the resolutions table. This way in these inline views, I'm able to just make it a little bit more recognizable who's commenting or who's uh, resolving some of these issues. I'm doing a few more customizations now to the detail view of these risks. Because I have slices, you have to be conscious of uh, what is the detail view, what is like a primary detail view, or what is the detail view of one of the slices. This will vary and it, uh, it, as you create, if you create many slices or if you have many tables, it can get a little bit tricky to keep track of. But if you look in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, the view name and the table name of whatever you're looking at in the app will show up. And that actually gives you a hyperlink to open up the specific view or specific table that you're trying to make modifications to. I have a view of team members that I'm uh, including in the menu. I'm going to go ahead and keep it a gallery view since we have headshots. I'm going to change the icon so it's recognizable as team members. This isn't going to be super important for my app, but it might be helpful to have it available. Now those team members, they have lists of related comments or uh, risks or resolutions, and those will show up in the detail view of each team member. So as I'm thinking about team members, I've actually decided I'd, I'd like to include a little bit of a gamification in this app, basically to show uh, which team members are resolving the most um, risks or most issues. And so what I'm doing here is I'm testing out a chart that would potentially show the number of resolutions by team member. Now I only have a couple of rows of sample data, so it's not showing much yet. But this may be something I'll use down the road. I'll keep it in the menu. I actually do think it'd be interesting though to count the number of resolutions by team member. So I'm gonna create a virtual column called count of resolutions. I'm just gonna use a simple expression called count. I'm counting that list of resolutions. And I'm gonna use that value to sort my team members. So Bob is at the top because he has the most associated resolutions. He's been solving most of these problems. He's gonna be the top team member shown in that gallery view. Let me go ahead and add a few more images to my sample data. It's a little easier to upload through the application than try to manually build it into my data. And I'm gonna start being a little bit more particular about what fields are showing up in my form. So what I just added uh, is a show expression. This show expression is using a context expression and it's saying if the context of the view, so if, it's a, if the view type is equal to a form, then I don't want that field to show up. I did that to the details field. I want the details field to show up in the card view, but I don't want it showing up in the form. It's unnecessary there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be particular about how some of these fields show up in different places. I'm gonna start adding some actions here. And the two main actions I want to provide on this view are adding comments and adding resolutions. And I'm gonna use a link to form deep link. Um, and what I'm doing here is I'm linking to 
the resolutions form, and then I'm just going to bring over the value of that risk ID. And so what this action will do is allow the user to just very quickly move over to the form to add a new resolution, and it's going to bring the, the actual risk ID with it automatically. So it really reduces the number of clicks that that user has to, um, has to do. So now you see that there's a resolve action. Let me go ahead and make it a, an overlay, which means it'll show up kind of in the bottom right-hand corner. You can see when that's clicked now, it automatically pulls in, okay, what was the risk we're looking at? And in this case, I'm using the preview as feature to pretend like I'm Jen at email.com. And so it's showing up there. Now I'm recognizing there are some other fields here that I don't want to show up when the view type is a form. And I'm going back to that card view and I'm adding that action I created as one of the action icons. So there's a really quick link to either help resolve the issue from the card view or from the action in the detail view, the overlay action. I just put a condition here to only show that edit action if the person viewing that entry is the person who created it. So I'm saying if documented by equals user email, user email is the person logged in. That's the only when that action will appear. Going back and I'm adding a, a link to form action for adding comments. This is very similar to the other, uh, to the resolution. I'm gonna make it a comment icon. And so now both of these actions are available and it's basically bringing you from the risk table to add an entry to the resolutions table or add an entry to the comments table. And I'm gonna go ahead and add that icon to the card view. Now some of my show if conditions are not working quite right. They're so showing that headshot and they shouldn't be. So I need to go correct the expressions there. I'm going to make the commenter and date time fields uneditable, just to make sure that someone isn't accidentally uh, logging one of these under someone else's name. I'm making the starting view risks. So when the application is first opened up, that's the first view, that's the default view for all my users. And actually, I've decided now, thinking about this view, I want to sort them by the amount of time that has passed since it's been created. So I just made a simple expression there um, and I'm looking at the value, the time since documented. I set it up uh, backwards. So I'm just gonna say now minus date time, the value in the date time column. And that's gonna give me just a duration value for how long has it been since this risk has been logged. And then I'm gonna sort this view based off of that time. And so the oldest risks are gonna show up first. Hopefully that will help promote those as um, which need to be resolved first. I could just sort this view by the existing date time column, but I also think this virtual column might be handy to have later on if I want to build in other uh, uh, reports or other dashboard views. The documented by field, it's not automatically populating my email that I'm logged in with right now. So I'm setting the initial value as user email. Now when I try this again, I'm logged in as jen at email.com. I'll go ahead and switch it to jan. We have a couple different users with similar names. And you can see that shows up automatically as that user. Add an image, it's collecting the date time. Now that, that virtual column, the time since documented, um, I'm gonna actually make sure that that is also hidden from the form view. So now you can see I've got a fairly clean form that only two fields need to be filled out, the text and the image, and then that saves it as a new item 
visible in the risks view. Now, if I log in as Bob, I can leave a comment on that. So just adding a little more context, you can see it's automatically associating it with user Bob. Now, when I go into the detail view, it shows those inline comments that Bob made. Now I'm logging in as Phil, someone else, and I can see, okay, well, I'm trying to log a resolution as Phil and I set up my show if expression incorrectly for the headshot. So that was still showing up. So I fixed that. So now I'm logging a resolution as Phil. This is adding a new record, related record in the resolution table. And so now it's recognizing, oh, that issue has, has a resolution. And so it's been moved over to that resolved view. I'm gonna go ahead and order that resolved view by time since documented. This isn't as critical, but it just might be a little bit more relevant as we accumulate lots of uh, risks that have been resolved. This is another example where I'm logging in as Phil and just leaving a comment on one of the other risks. Once I have the basics of my interface here in the emulator, it's easier to fill in and populate with new sample data this way uh, than trying to manually do it in my tables. I'm just kind of testing out my scoreboard view there, showing the number of uh, resolutions. Right now I'm just testing it out to make sure it works. Phil has two resolutions and Bob has one and that's shown up correctly. And then Phil is showing up as the top team member right now in that team gallery because um, we're counting how many resolutions everybody has and sorting that way. Okay, so we're getting to a place where this app is almost ready as a prototype to send to users to start testing out. But I think what I'd like to do is make sure that whenever a new resolution has been logged, I'm sending a notification to the person who identified that risk to begin with. So I'm, I'm creating a workflow. Now what I've realized is that from the resolutions table, I don't actually have a way of identifying who was the original creator of the risk. And so I could create a dereference in that workflow. Um, or what I'm actually going to do here is create a virtual column dereference. And then I'll be able to point to that virtual column from the, the resolutions table. And it will give me every time it'll give me the, the actual, the person that created that original risk that the resolution is associated with. So I go ahead and add that virtual column as the recipient of this workflow. That will be, um, who I send this push notification to. Now there's some templated, the defaulted default, uh, templated content in here. I'm going to go ahead and add a basic title, risk resolved by. You can see that uh, in order to pull in that field, it requires a little bit of custom formatting. And I'm just going to add a few more details into the body of that push notification. Now this is a simple way to notify the person that originally identified the risk that it's been resolved but we may want to create some other workflows here in the future, sending to like facility staff or other supervisors, et cetera, that may be relevant uh, to be aware. I did a deep link to that push notification. So if you click on the push notification, it'll bring you right to that resolved view. I think this is a good place to start making it available to my users. So I'm going to go ahead and um, make sure I'm going to whitelist an entire domain. So everyone at appsheet.com now has access to this app and I'm going to go ahead and deploy it. So I'm going to a deploy check here and then um, I'll go ahead and move it to the deployed state. And actually before I share it with my users, I'm probably going to want to customize the um, app icon a little bit. And then I'm going to go into UX settings and customize the app logo by connecting to that icon. And I'll change the color theme to red just so it uh, matches a little bit better. If 
if I go into the links tab, that gives me just a direct browser link. So that's, that's really easy to share if someone has the ability to open it up on their laptop. Otherwise, uh, this is also very easy to share to mobile users. Most of the people using this in this scenario most likely will just be uh, deskless and on a mobile device. And so uh, being able to open this up on their uh, phone was probably going to be easiest. So let's take a look at how what that looks like. So this is on the mobile device, how the app is showing up. And I'm just going to test out as a single user, I'm going to log a risk, add a comment, and also add a uh, resolution. So we have a railing that looks like it's uh, has some damage. So we're going to go ahead and log that. Now that's showing up as a risk, identified risk. As the same person, I'm going to leave a comment. Ideally, these will be different people. But this comment now that's being added will then show up with the risk for anyone else that logs in to view it. And then as that same person, I'm going to go ahead and add a resolution. And as soon as I do that, it recognizes that uh, the risk has uh, been resolved. It sends a push notification that you can see up top. And then it moves it over to that resolved view for everyone to access.